Hello guys, it's been a while. It may have taken me over a month, but I finally got my laptop running again after sequential GPU and SATA cable failures. Now that I can edit videos again, I can finally share what I've been working on in the last few weeks of summer, which is getting ready for Maker Faire. For those of you that don't know, Project Shapeoko will have a booth at World Maker Faire New York this year. And if you live within an hour or two of New York City, you have no excuse not to drop in and say hi to the Shapeoko team. And check out the rest of the crazy exhibits and demos, but definitely stop by and say hi. I'll be there with my machine, and speaking of my machine, that brings me back to the first point of this video, what I've been doing with it. As most of you know, a couple weeks ago, I built a wooden enclosure for my CNC to reduce dust and increase the mobility of my setup. But at the time that video was made, my setup wasn't actually complete. I had my Arduino and G-Shield bolted to the side of my enclosure, naked. I did put a rudimentary cardboard roof over my electronics to protect them if, for example, my vacuum hose disconnected from the box and fell, but it was an ugly and temporary solution. So in the following weeks, while I waited for my MacBook to be fixed, I designed a plywood enclosure to house my stepper motor controller. A barrier from physical abuse wasn't enough, however. There were two other life-extending measures I wanted to implement with this enclosure. The first was a fan to cool the motor controller. There are three chips on the G-Shield that can each channel up to 2.5 amps at whatever your input voltage is. That means those stepper drivers can get pretty warm. With a stock power supply and NEMA 17 stepper motors, I measured about 140 degrees Fahrenheit on the board after a medium length job. That's not a dangerous temperature, but I would still feel better reducing the magnitude of the thermal cycling. So to combat this, I designed my enclosure with a fan salvaged from an old CPU heatsink. The other source of fatigue I wanted to reduce was at the screw-style terminal blocks on the G-Shield. It's a known fact that the grey 4-conductor wire you get with a Shapeoko kit is one of the hardest objects known to mankind. It's obnoxiously inflexible and a general pain to work with. The AC cords on my power tools hold smaller bend radii than this Shapeoko wiring. The problem arises when you have to connect and disconnect these wires or even bend them the slightest. They put a lot of stress on the soldered on terminal blocks, which in turn transfer that force through the pins into the Arduino, which is secured to the base by four small diameter screws. None of these components are supposed to be load bearing. Now I might be overreacting to the issue, and I might also be an idiot for not replacing the stock wiring outright, but I decided to address this problem by using four pin DC connectors. I found some on eBay that had the right number of pins, although I wouldn't quite call them XLR connectors. The item I found is actually a microphone connector used for CB and ham radios as well as aviation applications. If you're searching for your own connectors, try looking for a listing that includes both male and female ends in one package. They tend to come out cheaper that way. But taking a step back to the overall design of my enclosure, I wanted everything to be made from 5mm or quarter inch plywood, and for the entire unit to be removable if I wanted to run my Shapeoko away from its dust enclosure. Originally, I thought about using box joints to connect my enclosure panels, but I didn't want to get into that level of complexity just yet. Making sure all of the cutouts matched was too tedious to do manually, and automatic box generating scripts didn't give me the level of flexibility I wanted. So instead, I decided to cut my side panels with a lip that would slot into a .08 inch groove in the baseboard. This tiny bit of interlocking would still provide a significant increase in contact area between my panels, which is important if your primary attachment method is an adhesive. The electronics enclosure would be secured to its parent by bolting through a pair of flanges on the sides. After working out what I wanted the layout to look like, I modeled everything in 3D and ran it through MeshCam to get G-code. After scribbling down a crude wiring diagram, I soldered the stepper motor wires to the female plug and bare leads to the male chassis socket. This part took me a while, not only because I'm terrible at soldering, but because it's difficult to catch the wire strands on the tiny tabs on the back end of the plug. The chassis connector was a little easier to do. Just tuck some wire into the back of the connector pins and fill it with solder. Having a third hand would make this process much easier though. I installed the connectors in the now dry electronics enclosure. In hindsight, I should have thinned out the walls in this area since there's only about a quarter inch of threading on the chassis connectors. The nut barely secured it. Instead of plywood, I decided the enclosure's lid would be made out of plexiglass, which is rigid enough to have threads cut in it. This way, I could mount the fans without having to put a nut on the other side of the base material. Once everything was hooked up, I did a quick test to make sure everything still worked and that none of my stepper motors had gotten reversed in the process. Positive X, Y, and Z were all correct. All in all, a successful project, although my cable management is still terrible. That wraps it up for this week's video. I want to thank you all very much for watching, and I will see you at Maker Faire.